On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, GHI travels to Belize to help a man who is tormented by Mayan spirits haunting an ancient ruin. She grasped at me, pull on my back, then she jump and run. He's terrified the spirits are following him home, so the team include him in the investigation. Can a primeval ritual to reach Mayan souls determine if Pedro's fears are warranted? I have the goose pimples right here. Whoa, he's just taking me over. But not everyone wants to play with fire. Ugh, you can like see it dripping from her arm. But soon, they may all pay the price for experimenting with an ancient tradition. What the hell was that? <gasps> That's freaking me out. Will sacrificed Mayan souls return for a man fearing for his life? Oh. Welcome to Belize here in Central America. Susan's going to give us the download for what we're coming up against. Well, team, we are headed over to Cajal Patch, which was an ancient Mayan city dating back to 1200 BC. Now Cajal Patch is an archaeological site that is protected as well as a popular tourist destination. Now, the remaining ruins were once buildings where violent bloodletting rituals and human sacrifices took place. So uh, what activity have people been experiencing? There have been reports of an apparition of a lady dressed in white seen throughout the temple. Tribal chants have been heard and possessions have also happened here. Wow. So who's our client? Why do they want us to come in? Our client actually has had a lot of experiences himself. His name's Pedro Cruz. One incident was when he was entertaining a lady friend at Cahal Pesh and suddenly something took her over and she became possessed. Started going berserk and talking in some ancient Mayan language. Also claimed to see several shadow figures as well as heard voices and chanting. So what does Pedro want us to do for him? He wants to know, is this paranormal activity attached to him or is it attached to the ancient Mayan temple? Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Welcome to Cajal Patch. This is uh, Chris. Hi. Chris, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. I'm Paul. Paul, Pedro. nice to meet you as well. I call GHI because I have had a lot of paranormal experience in Cajal Patch, and I wanted for them to assist in trying to get to the bottom of it. I hope that after the investigation of GHI, the spirits leave me alone. That we shall finally put a closure on any paranormal activity that I've experienced in the past. Pedro, it's a great pleasure to be here and investigate these Mayan ruins. Um, shall we make a start and uh, see where they are? Let's go and see where they are, young man. Great. When did the Maya first settle this area? This area would have been settled as early as a thousand before Christ. And how many people would have been living here? 15 to 20,000 oh in the area. My. I'd love to hear a little bit more about why you called us in. Because I've been a tour guide in this area for many years and I visit the site a lot and I've had a paranormal experiences at the site myself. And for some apparent reason, I believe these spirits are trying to contact me and maybe they could be following me home. So I'm kind of scared in a sense. Oh wow, look at this place. This is it, huh? This is it. What was this area used for? This would be a plaza in certain times of the year whenever the elite wanted more rain, for example, for the crop. Mm -hmm. They had to do special rituals, bloodletting rites to appease the gods. They would summon the peasants from outskirts of the area to gather here for those events. Now, Pedro, you had an experience here? Many years ago, I came in here about 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning with a friend. We wandered up the stairs, and at this precise point here is where we stood. And what occurred, this individual started to react in a different form. I heard her squealing and crying. I don't know what language she was speaking. I presume it might have been maybe some type of Mayan dialect. And then in that same attempt, she grasped at me, pulled on my back, scratched me, and then she jumped and ran. 
one other activity has happened here, Pedro. Other people who have uh, commented that they see a lady with a white dress. Mm -hmm. People who said they've seen her here in this area and other areas. Okay, it's something we'll keep an eye out for. Okay, shall we move on to the next location and have a look? Definitely. Great. Let's head on. What type of paranormal activity happens in this area? People have accounted they have seen nine shadows or images here. Mm -hmm. And they also see on top of the chamber there, a ceremonial area, they've seen a large individual, tall, seven feet tall, with two large knives. Sombras, sí. Sombras. Que solo uno ni dos. He visto diez sombras. Diferentes tamaños. El más grande es como diez pies de alto. Pero tenía una espada aquí y otro uno acá. What other types of activity are happening here within this area? The same white woman that people presume to see in the other area is believed to be coming and wandering in this area sometimes. Right. And they believe she would walk through that doorway you see in the distance. They just disappear. I was going wrong to the back. I looked backwards and I saw this lady in full white. Her skin like started to fell off and she was looking at me. And then I looked, it just disappearing. I think Kahalpet has a lot of spirits there. What types of paranormal phenomenon has been reported in this area? A number of people have mentioned that they have seen a lady dressed in white, like we mentioned in the other area. And she comes here on the second floor, and that doorway there, apparently she goes inside there and never returns back. That area we call the point of no return. This is Plaza E. Plaza E, yeah. This is the place where you had quite an extreme experience through the use of bloodletting, is that right? Yes, we reenacted in the sense or attempted to. We use obsidian, which was this type of blade they use to cut themselves to get their blood. The blood was put in an urn, it was burnt, and that would do contact with the gods. The experience you face is like you are totally consumed by the spirit or you become a part of that event. We were told that you were hearing some audible things as well, like, like crowds, uh, almost, what was it? Chanting. Cheer, chanting. Yes. Wow. Would you feel comfortable about possibly performing that again? I would definitely be comfortable and trying to reenact, see what possibilities lie beyond. So this is the very top of the pyramid. This is where the sacrifices would have happened? It is believed this would have been where the sacrifice would have happened. Well, I think we're going to really give it a good go tonight. We'd like to thank you for showing us around. And thank you very much, thank Pedro. Thank you as well. See you in a bit. Pedro is concerned that he has become a target. His greatest fear, and the reason he has called us in to investigate, is that the spirits are following him home. He's afraid that he's putting his friends and family at risk and wants our expert opinion if he needs to disassociate himself from the site. This is beyond creepy. The whole team went over to the location to set up all the cameras for the bloodletting ritual to see if um, we could get things rolling so we can capture whatever could possibly happen from this ritual that we're about to do. <laughs> Did you hear that? Turn the lights off, turn the lights off. Oh. It sounded sound like something, and then I sort of heard movement. It sounded big. Again, it was just there, just around there. Scott, Paul, and I headed over to set up cameras at Plaza A, and we all heard what sounded like really heavy footsteps, kind of like running through the brush. Guys, I'm seeing shadows over here. That's what I thought. I just turned around. So you I saw shadows. Saw I noticed what was this huge, massive black mass. Yeah, yeah, I turned I around because I thought I saw it. all the way across over here and then leave into the bushes. I saw it right here. Shadows actually a plane a from light. here. Of some, this, this, this guy actually saw shadows in here. We haven't even started the investigation yet, and already things are happening. So we need to get those cameras ready um, and, and get out there and start investigations. We're 
we're going to conduct a bloodletting experiment. We wanted to see if we could duplicate Pedro's experience in calling these Mayan spirits to communicate with us. So, Paul, how is the setup going for the bloodletting ritual? Everything's actually placed outside. What we have is a full-spectrum DVR camera, the thermal camera, as well as your full-spectrum digital. Speaking of blood rituals, yes, um, we do need a volunteer. I'm scared of needles. I'm not going to. No. I'm all for investigating, but cut yeah. myself to investigate <laughs> now. This whole blood letting ritual made me really uncomfortable. I didn't like the idea at all, and I wasn't going to be cut so that we could attract Mayan spirits. I'll do it. Are you sure, Susie? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it, no problem. Okay, Susie, you're gonna be inside, of course, the blood ritual room, and I will be joining you there. Guys, Joe and uh, Scott, you are going to be outside with Chris. Paul, yes. um, we're going to be sending you to the top of mm -hmm. the Mayan temple, mm -hmm. where you're gonna have a bird's eye view of the entire complex. Okay, super, let's get to it. Susan volunteered for the bloodletting experiment that we were conducting with Pedro. The bloodletting was a process that was used by the Mayans to reach their specific gods. Pedro uh, had some unusual experiences here before using the same process. So we wanted to use the bloodletting ritual as a trigger to stir up activity here at these Mayan ruins. And we are rolling that one. We were using a full spectrum camcorder, a low lux camcorder, um, and that was pointed directly at the entire group. I was also using a handheld full spectrum recording device. Yeah, so basically, I mean, they're going to be in there doing the whole bloodletting thing. Joe, Scott, and I were set up just outside the bloodletting room, and we were there to keep an eye on that whole open area. There we go. We're looking for any shadows, any plays in light, and, of course, listening for these sounds of chanting. It's funny what, like, Barry and I agree and disagree on. <laughs> he wants to watch. <laughs> Bloodletting ritual. I actually took my position on the highest point um, in Kalpesh, which is actually the, uh, the the Temple Pyramid. There, I was able to get a, a bird's eye view of Plaza E, and you know, get a good idea of what actually is going on during that ritual. Right now, I'm the eye in the sky. Uh, let's not forget there, there were human sacrifices up here, and that may stimulate some sort of paranormal activity around me. Okay, Pedro. What is this? A vessel like this, this type the Mayan would have used. Mm -hmm. We have within the vessel, the incense is only used by the elite to contact the gods. This process is a way of attracting the spirit back to that location. And here we have a unique obsidian blade that from the area, uh -huh. but it's unique to the Maya bloodletting rites. So we're keeping this as authentic as possible. As authentic as possible, yeah. Okay. So what do you think of the whole bloodletting thing? I, I think we have to try it. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it'll produce something remains to be seen. We're just about to start the process now. Paul, um, let us know if anything should pop up. Time for? Are we ready? Let's see. Okay, great. I felt that if I had the opportunity to share an experience with an ancient spirit of some sort, like, I'm not going to let that pass me by, especially with somebody who had a similar experience himself. Just take your time, okay? Can you please show yourself to me? Okay, something's going on right now. Who's there? Can you please show yourself to me? Now, 
during the bloodletting ritual, I'm hearing this, this, this voice. Alrighty. I don't know what's going on here, but there's definitely a voice, the same voice is coming from about three or four different places. chanting they're hearing. Who's out there? Uh, gross. But I need for you to come forward. Are you one of these shadows? Well, I need you to show yourself to me. I just heard a female voice. Things are very close to me right now. I don't want to say that they were on top of this temple with me. Now, I know that I'm above uh, the echo effect that you'd actually get when you're down in the bottom of the plazas. Whatever it is, it's right here with me right now. Are you this lady in white? Who's there? Were you sacrificed to the gods here? This is where I had seen a shadow during our setup. I'm actually seeing shadows, like movement going on in Plaza A, which is actually the other side of the temple. What makes that interesting is that nobody's in that vicinity at all. I'll try and capture some of these shadow figures. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go grab my still camera um, and I'm going to place it there, see if I can actually try and capture some of this movement that I'm seeing. Come on. Let's try and focus in. get this overwhelming sense of just, I don't know, like serenity. I think there is some sort of energy that helped guide the whole experience towards the heavens. Oh, I thought I heard a voice again. Little growl. What's that? What does it sound like to you? I mean, it sounded like it was in that direction, but... It sounded like over the wall. Do you think it was thunder, or was it something else? No, it didn't sound like thunder. Can we look up over this thing? A couple of times I thought I heard uh, what sounded like low grumbling sounds. At one point, Chris and I both heard it, and we went to check it out. I mean, the first thing that popped in my head was thunder, but there's not really any clouds. I'm not seeing anything. Maybe because the wall's blocking something. I don't know. Go to Chris. Go for Chris. Is there something that uh, has caught your attention? Did you hear that, like, sort of crumbling kind of... I don't, I don't know how to explain it. The first thing I could think of was thunder, but it sounded closer to the ground. Yeah, I did actually hear that. Um, I actually tagged that as a growl, but I did hear it very clearly up here. Um, I am hearing a very high-pitched whistle. I don't know if you guys are hearing that, too. Yeah, we didn't hear that down here, so pretty strange. Okay, anything else? Give me a shout. Yeah. Are you hearing this? It sounds like it's in the walls. If 
you're wanting our attention, you've got it. As the experiment continued, it sounded like footsteps um, passed above our heads um, high in the chamber. We had cameras, Rolex full spectrum cameras, pointed directly above. It'll be interesting to see if anything actually was passing along there. What the hell? Joe? What's going on? Something touch him. As the uh, ritual progressed, at one point, I thought I felt what felt like fingers run down the side of my left rib. I thought I felt something touch my left side, so I turned, and there was nobody there. I had the flashlights, I had the, the DV cam scanning everywhere, and uh, I really didn't see anything that would brush against me. Again, so what that was, I'm not really entirely sure. What did it feel like? It just felt like something went like this. Are you kidding me? I am not. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Is this your way of trying to reach Pedro? This is high pitch. Common to Yamas. Unfortunately, I don't speak Mayan. So hopefully you understand either English or badly spoken Spanish. This bloodletting ritual may have, in fact, stimulated some sort of paranormal activity. However, this may be something to do with the fact that this was where a lot of human sacrifices took place. Hey, Chris. What's up? Feels like something is scratching. It's burning? It's hurting. It's like something scratching my neck. Yeah. Like four or five times in a row. Well, let me see your neck. Um, I mean, it's like red right here. Is it hurt? It feels like there's scratch marks on my neck. All right, and there's definitely nothing that you get caught up on. There was nothing around that would have scratched me or poked me, and uh, I don't know what it was, but my neck is actually bothering me right now. Once the bloodletting ritual got underway, everyone started to have different experiences. We concluded the experiment. We left the incense burner and let the cameras do their work. And we have audio recording devices there as well. So it'll be interesting to see if the flames that were burning have attracted the attention of some of these alleged spirits. Well, then hopefully we have caught them on camera. Okay, folks, so the bloodletting ceremony is over, and now we need to move on. We need to get back and schedule. Joe and Scott, would you mind going over to Plaza A and the point of no return? Mm -hmm. Paul, Susan, um, I'd like you to follow up on the steps with uh, with Pedro. Chris and I will head over to Plaza A. So we'll be in the walkie. If anything strange happens, let us know. Okay. Okay. over to Plaza A, and this is where Pedro told us about a few claims. One was this woman in white who walked across the plaza. Another is these nine shadow figures. What was that over there? What? Did you see something? Yeah. Where? Over there by that tunnel. By the tunnel? It just moved down into the tunnel. Crazy enough, though, we just walked into the place and Barry was already seeing movement in the back corner. We've heard a lot of stories about a woman in white. Do you know who she is? Were you a Mayan peasant who died a violent death here? I'd... Voice. Female. Yeah. Yeah. We were hearing voices, and Chris, in fact, um, had noted that she thought that she possibly was seeing a figure moving on the other side. Hello. I was hearing movement over here before too. Remember? 
Uh, oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. Are you trying to reach Pedro? If you're wanting our attention, you've got it. It seemed to be back and forward, back and forward. And we were going from one side of the plaza to the other side and back again. Okay, so this thing you saw was moving down this way? Yeah, there was something cracked over here. It was like a branch or something. Okay. That's what caught my attention first, and I just glimpsed as it moved down through here. It didn't really seem to want to come forward to us. It seemed to keep wanting to be in the background somewhere. For Pedro, of course, he's very concerned that these spirits may follow him back uh, to his home, and that's something we've been monitoring carefully. Joe and Scott, outside Plaza A, this is the hallway tunnel where the lady in white was said to have appeared. We had an audio recorder running as well as these ambient temperature deviation devices that we've been using recently. If you are here, could you give us a sign that you were here by walking past those blue lights? Blue indicates it's a cold spot. Red indicates that it's red hot. If indeed you are here, change it to red. Why do you feel the need to bother Pedro? What has he done to you? Does he bother you? We have to give him some answers and we'll ask you to come forward. Oh, a temperature device is flickering. Is that you? Can you make the other one flicker? We need both of them to go. I don't think she can do it, Joe. Nope. It's all myth and tales. We decided to get a little bit antagonistic, saying that we don't believe you're a spirit, we don't believe that you're here. And when we start to get belligerent, we seem to get more activity. Are you too weak? You're not the strong spirit that everybody says you are. Or stupid. Oh, it just went. It just went That's off. That's freaking me out. That never really that happens is before. freaking me out. You're not the strong spirit that everybody says you are. Or stupid. Oh, it just went... It just went That's off. That's freaking me out. That never really that happened is before. freaking me out. That never blinked all off, right? No. Does that make you angry? That you're stupid? And definitely antagonized something and, and was able to evoke some kind of a response. We don't normally practice being disrespectful. We would never do that. But sometimes you have to be more forceful with the spirits that actually you're trying to communicate with. Some people think it's a joke. That it's just stories to drum up business. What the hell is that? Things seem to pick up for us. I thought I heard a voice uh, behind me. It sounded, I don't know, it sounded like a person talking, but it was like off in the distance. It didn't come from that direction, it came from this direction. Oh my gosh, I got the wicked chills. I could have swore I saw an old woman's face. Oh, that's nice. Wow, I got like goosebumps. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. It just freaked me out a little bit. I turned and I looked and I could see an old woman. Place can do that. I'm telling you, man. This is. Is it like the tricks of the eye? No, it could be, but it might not be. That was weird. Something was definitely responding to our questioning. So it's going to be very interesting when we go to analysis to see if we actually did, in fact, capture anything and be able to bring proof of this lady in white forward to the client. So right now we're entering the uh, entrance of the elite. We are, yeah. And this, obviously, is this the spot. Now, this is actually where Pedro had his experience with a lady friend of his. This lady friend, in fact, turned 
um, very nastily um, into what he says almost somebody else. I mean, it appeared to him that she was possessed. Now, whenever we're given the chance to actually work with the client, it gives us a, a, an edge. What if it was Pedro that's actually being uh, haunted right now? What if it's an attachment to him? We want to find out exactly what is going on so we can give him some answers. We think it'd be interesting to find out who this this person who possessed your friend would be. Um, and I think it might be worth us trying you know, to ask some questions. Okay, EVP session. This is Paul and Susan and Pedro, the elite entrance. Why did you possess Pedro's friend? I'd like to ask the person that possessed my friend, who were you? And what role did you play in the society many years ago? Were you a princess or were you a sacrificial victim? Reveal yourself. We need to do some other form of stuff mm -hmm. to recreate and bring them back. Okay, well then lead the way. You want to go? Let's try that then. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So what are we doing now? It's a form of communication they would have done many years ago. People believe you clap, the acoustics would revive whatever spiritual feeling would be in the area. Pedro decided to take the EVP session just a step further. So we moved over to the center of the courtyard, just outside of the entrance of the elite. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. He suggested the calling of the spirits. You clap three times for north, south, east, and west, and then one time for the center of the earth, which represents the heavens. Obviously, we would like to communicate with whoever is here. Please, I've sacrificed a little bit of myself. I've opened myself up to you. Oh. It's coming in right here. I can feel it. I, I'm, I'm getting the same sort of feeling. Oh, it's just taking me over. I'm trying my best to control it. Okay. Very bad. You know what? Gee. Actually, you know what? I feel like... Oh, it's coming in right here. I can feel it. I, I'm, I'm getting the same sort of thing. Gotta weep, gotta... Oh, it's just taking me over. I, I don't know. I'm trying my best to control it. We had some interesting experiences when we decided to call the spirits using the clapping. Paul, who's quite a skeptic, started feeling this really electrical surge through his body, as well as Pedro. Okay, we can try another thing. Go on. I will do also a call to call the people who will be going into a ritual. Calling people in? Yes. Okay. I'll just document this whole okay. thing right now. Did you hear that? Somebody said, hmm? No, no, no. It sounded, it sounded like just fast, the footsteps again. Really heavy, big ones that are quick, like, do 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 like, big ones. There's the footsteps? Yeah, the galloping hey, I'm just getting the chill again. You know what? He says the chill just went through. It's coming on again. I heard what sounded like these galloping footsteps. The same footsteps I heard in Plaza A setting up for the night. Hopefully, I managed to capture that sound on the DV. Scott and I decided to check out the point of no return. When we first got in here, we set up the laser grid, and we had the uh, DV cam, the 360 audio, the millimeter. If there's anybody here, could you let us know by making a sound or perhaps telling us your name? What was that? That sounded like a rolling case. We were doing an EVP session, and we were getting a few bits of noises that we couldn't make out. It sounded like being dragged on it like a like wooden some floor or wood, Yeah, wheels Dumbed across a, yeah. a stone floor. Did you hear that? That was like a growl. Yeah. 
That was creepy. It sounded more vocal to me, like a human growl, but uh, I'm not really sure. Maybe the lady in white comes here. Are you here, ma'am? That was that way, wasn't it? It sounded like it was like almost above us. There it is again. Or is that somebody's voice? Can't tell. Can't tell. I don't know really where they are. Now, what would this place be considered, though? Like, what I would it be called? I, I just swore I heard a voice there again. I heard something, but I wasn't hearing it as a voice. I've got a walkie. And Barry's in there, right? Hello? Are you trying to reach Pedro? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, you get a new pair of shorts in this bag you wear? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. As I stand on the edge of a cliff, you nearly had me off the edge of it. What's up? Scott and I are at the point of no return. Where are you from that point? The courtyard, eh? We heard what sounded like a growl or just somebody talking. Joe, we have been hearing growling as well. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it, I'm sure it's not an animal. What about cases rolling? Were you, like, rolling any cases around by chance? No, that's not us, Joe. We don't have any cases. Okay, copy. We're going to be heading back to Command Central. We'll meet you back at Command Central. Copy that. Thank you. We've just concluded our investigation into Cahill Pesh. At the outset, we were experiencing many different pieces of activity, ranging from voices and growling, from seeing these shadows moving back and forward. I think it's going to be really unusual going into analysis to see if the old ways were successful in reaching those spirits or whether it was the new ways that we were using to reach the spirits. Pedro had a lot of very intimate and close encounters with the paranormal at the site. And having him on the investigation was a very essential tool. Whatever we discover tomorrow through analysis will answer whether these spirits are really attached to Pedro or if these are just protective spirits of the Mayan culture. when we were investigating at the elite staircase, the opening to the temple oh, in the courtyard. Yeah. yeah. I know that I experienced these footsteps. Right. Somehow by chance, I managed to find out what was actually causing these footsteps. And I have a visual footage of it, and you cool. can hear the sound that I've been hearing this Ooh. whole time. It's pretty clear if you want to take a listen. listen. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys hear that? What? What? Wow. It wasn't really footsteps. They happened to be wings from this humongous owl that was swooping by. And certainly the size of that owl, I mean, with the wingspan, it doesn't even need to touch the ground. I mean, with the, the, the pounding in the air, it is giving the uh, sound of footsteps. That's a brilliant catch. Excellent. Thank you. I've got a piece that I'm going to play for you. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I, I don't know how to describe it. Let's hear it. Wait till you hear it. So Paul and Susan have gone with Yeah, I guess so. What the hell? That has to be the best EVP I've ever heard. Cajo Pesh really is an amazing set of structures and for us it's one of the oldest buildings that we have ever had the pleasure and honor to be able to investigate during the investigation we were having some really weird experiences in Cajo Pesh. now here in in plaza a uh, pedro all the teams were experiencing these unusual shadows i had seen um it wasn't a white figure or, or, or a jet black figure that had been reported here it almost looked brown to me as as it moved into the tunnel um at the back of plaza a chris she had also noticed um, 
um, an unusual shadow just on the steps behind us here. We went after it, um, but we couldn't find any trace of, of what it possibly was. One of the things uh, that came up too was Joe was investigating the tunnel behind us in Plaza A, and he said that he saw like a face appear, which kind of caught him off guard. But also Joe and Scott were investigating Plaza E, and they both said that they felt as though they'd been touched. Joe and Scott, they were investigating just outside the tunnel in Plaza A. They were using several different types of devices to try and get some type of communication going. So what you see here, Pedro, are, are the two devices. These are recording the temperatures within the tunnel system itself. Not the strong spirit that everybody says you are. We're stupid. Oh, it just went... Ooh, it just went off, freaking me out. It's an indication of somebody trying to tell them something. This is the first time ever that we've ever seen it function like this, and it coincided with the fact that Scott was referring to the spirits and calling them stupid. If you say that that's never happened before to any of your equipment, it's really something to think about. They were saying, don't disrespect us. And that was the line that was drawn. What he did, he's insulting a group of people that were highly intelligent. Mm -hmm. They could predict solar and lunar eclipse and you're gonna call them stupid, mm -hmm. you know? We wanted to bring something else to your attention. During an investigation with Joe and Scott, um, they were in Plaza A. They had just concluded their investigation. Um, Joe had thought that he had switched off the camera. So we want you to listen to this, Pedro. Um, it really needs no introduction. Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that, that's as clear as daylight, man. Mm -hmm. Crystal clear. I mean, he sounds friendly, mm -hmm. but the way he murmurs my name, uh -huh. he's not after me, but he wonders Pedro should have gone from here quite a while. I enjoy every minute of this, but it's kind of scary for me as well. Mm -hmm. Now, why would you be afraid at, at this at this stage? Because while you guys are gone, I'll be continue coming here. Yes. So I wonder if you will attempt to bother me in the future, you see? We can totally understand where, where you're coming from. We're very confident in saying that there should be nothing following you home. Our biggest message to you is uh, they have drawn the line about respecting them. And that we've seen in our evidence. And that, I think, going out of this is something I would definitely remember. I feel so good. I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm speechless, so to speak. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure for us, Pedro, and we wish you the very best. Likewise, wish you the best as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After the investigation of GSI, I'm not scared of them following me because I don't think they will. They just want to be around us and try to tell us we were here before you. Continue admiring what you see and work with us. I think it has answered some of the questions that Pedro was putting across to us. Yeah. Oh, he can go back and forward to the site, and there's not going to be any trouble. Um, I think he's going to be perfectly fine. Just promise me one thing, Barry. In the future, no more spilling of human blood on investigations. <laughs>